So I walk out the door after a meeting at someone's home, having, having given away my books. I walk out a door after a home meeting, after having given the grace of God to people, telling them what God has done for them, whether they believe it or not. And in the meantime, the people who have attended the meeting, they've been fed by the host or the hostess at no charge, by the way. The host or the hostess, I've never seen one time at a home meeting where someone places a bill on someone's lap. Nobody goes around handing around bills, and I don't go around selling books. And, and people on top of that, they hear the words of Aeonian life. They hear words that belong to Aeonian life. They're being they're being told of treasure in Christ, and in some cases, it prompts them to believe what they're hearing. Again, why wouldn't you believe it? Why wouldn't you believe it if an insurance salesman came in your house, told you that you had $10 million of life insurance, all the health insurance, unlimited health insurance, and he's going to throw in car insurance. And then he walks out and he says, you're now currently covered. You're waiting for the attache case to come out. It never does. The guy gets ready to walk out the door. And you say, well, wait a minute. When do we do the paperwork? And he says, there is no paperwork. The insurance is in effect right now. This is what we do. You're completely covered. Car, home, auto, and life, and health. You, we got it all covered. My God, uh, you just want to follow him and find out, well, how do I get in on this? You're already in. You don't have to get in on it. You're already in. And then all you have to do is just believe that it's true. Just believe it and start enjoying your insurance. But people are so, um, they're so connected to the human way of doing things and or human organizations that they just want to join. So I'm walking out the door and they go, like, how do I join something? Or they just are so stuck in that human mode. I said, no, there's nothing to join here. This is a connection of people. It's a vital connection of people. It's not bound by any human head. It is bound by information. It is the information of the evangel that is freeing. And that is what we give them by word. That is what we give them by print. That is what we give them on the internet, on videos. It's an exchange of information. Uh, but it's not like information about, you know, how to get rid of a carbuncle or how to cure yourself of uh, indigestion. No, it's information belonging to Ionian life. And we can thank God that we have the internet today. And God has used the internet to free people. Uh, it's, it's an interconnected uh, people that God leads to information. This is about information because remember, God chose the written word. That's information and people assimilate it through reading and through word of mouth from those who have read it. In the beginning, God spoke to prophets. Now the word of God is written and now people like me study it assimilate it, and I can share it and put it in a nutshell for people, other people to hear it and believe it. But they want to know, how do we join you, Martin? I said, you don't join me. I have a website. You don't join it. It's information. It's just, I am connected with other people, and this is the information. And here, here's the thing. There's nothing to join here. Nothing to join here. It flies in the face. Well, how are you people organized? I've heard that many times, that question. How are you people organized? We're organized by the Spirit of God. And this is not a cop-out. The Spirit of God is real. It's a power. And our head is Jesus Christ. It's not the Pope. It's not Joel Osteen. It's not... Uh, who's the guy head of the Scientology? Ron Howard? No, that's Opie. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. Jesus Christ is the head of the e Ecclesia. Oh, Martin, that sounds pretty radical. Prove it. Well, Colossians 1.18 is pretty plain here, and that says, And he is the head of the body, the ecclesia, who is sovereign, firstborn from among the dead. How about that? The head of our little organization is sovereign, firstborn from among the dead, that in all he may be becoming first. For in him the entire complement, that is, the fullness of God, delights to dwell, and through him to reconcile all to him, to reconcile all in the universe to him. Oh, by the way, he created all in the universe. Colossians 1.16 
I'm reading Colossians 1, 16 through Colossians 20. That is our head. That is our chief, capital C. That is the one that brought this information to us. And he shared it, first of all, through one guy. And his name was Paul, the Apostle Paul. Came through him. This lowly guy, a criminal, really a killer, and God used him as a trophy for grace. Took the worst guy on the planet and said, this is a good subject. This is a good subject matter. This is a good guy to make a spokesman for grace. I take my vilest enemy. How great is that? Yes, very illustrative, right from the get-go. And this body is joined. Now I'm going to go to Ephesians uh, chapter 4, unless my camera dies here, uh, verse 11. And th th this is the unity of the body of Christ. It exists. It doesn't have to be made. This is what humans don't understand. It doesn't have to be made. It exists. And it's real and it's powerful. And the, the connectivity, the, the sinews and the joints of it is the Spirit of God. Nothing to join here. You just come to believe this great insurance policy. When I say that now, I'm making an analogy of this of the, the, the justification from sins and the peace of God. These things are facts, whether you believe them or not. We tell people, and we prove it by not charging them for their food. We, we don't prove it, but we suggest it. Our The way we deliver this is consistent with our message. I give away books. The food's free. And they hear gracious words of Aeonian life. And then they're sent on their way. Nobody asks them to sign anything. Nobody brings out an attache case. Nobody brings out any papers. Nobody asks for any money. Nobody asks for any money. It's great. They can't believe it. What do we join? You don't join. It exists. Uh, 4.11. Uh, it, and and it, again, the spirit is real. Spirit is not hypothetical. It's not a theory that the Spirit of God operates in us. This is why we meet each other, and it seems like we've known each other our in entire lives. I'm going to explain the nuts and bolts of that, starting in Ephesians 4, 11. This same one gives, indeed, these as apostles, yet these as prophets, yet these as evangelists, these as pastors, yet these as teachers, toward the adjusting of the saints for the work of dispensing. So even the saints, now we, when we come to believe, this is the organization that these people are looking for. They're looking for brick and mortar. They're looking for a billboard. They're looking for a facade with a sign. They're looking for an awning and a shingle hanging from it. They're, they're looking for a storefront, but that's not what we have. We meet in the strangest places. I've had meetings in airports, meetings in dance halls, meetings in high schools, meetings in pole barns, meetings in old dentist's office, meetings in psychiatrist's office. I've had meetings in churches, anywhere people gather, anywhere people gather, literally anywhere people gather. That's where the body of Christ meets. There's no storefront. There's no awning. There's no shingle. There's no billboard. None of that stuff. And this flies in the face of how humans organize things. But I'm telling you, this is more real than anything you've ever been a part of. And you're a part of it. And I'm, I'm a part of it. And people want to know, well, who are you, who are you accountable to? Who, who's your leader? Take me to your leader. Like a bunch of Martians coming down. Take us to your leader. Our leader is Jesus Christ. Uh, we haven't seen him lately. That's okay. His spirit operates in those he gives gifts to. Whether they're... Well, the apostles and the prophets here belong to the foundation. Go to Ephesians 2.20. Paul says the apostles and prophets are part of the foundation. So in this list in Ephesians 4... 11, you can scratch out apostles and prophets. They're not necessary anymore. The office of an apostle, the office of a prophet. Nobody's giving a prophetic word today because the word of God has been complete. So that leaves us with um, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And these are three, these are three um, callings in the body of Christ. God appoints these. Humans don't. You don't go to school for it. And um, these toward the adjusting of the saints for the work of, of dispensing. And the Spirit of God is what's operating through these people, these pastors, evangelists, and teachers. Some people can be evangelists and teachers. Some can be pastors and evangelists. Any number of combinations. It's okay. Don't worry about it. The same one organizes everything. For the upbuilding, for the adjustment of the saints, for the work of dispensing. So the saints are adjusted inside this this amazing living organism called the body of Christ, and then we are sent out, the saints are then sent out to the world um, for, um, for dispensing. Remember, 2 Corinthians 5, we are, we are ambassadors of 
as of God entreating through us into the world, we say, be conciliated to God. Why should I? Because God's conciliated to you. That's why. So this is for the upbuilding of the body of Christ unto the end that we, this is ideal, that we should attain to the unity of the faith and the realization of the Son of God. It, it comes to more and more understanding, more and more realization. How do I progress in this truth, Martin? You come to a further realization of it. This will, you won't be able to help but produce fruit. But the realization comes before the fruit. Light comes before fruit, even in the natural world. The tree or the plant that gets the most light bears the most fruit. Therefore, when you learn more and you assimilate it, you, you think about it, and the Spirit of God makes it alive, you will produce fruit. This is the opposite of the Christian religion. Hurry up and produce fruit. Produce fruit now, and maybe God will be nice to you and give you some more information. That's the other way around. You get information first. That's why Jesus lauded uh, Mary, who is sitting at his feet. Martha's working in the kitchen. She's a mess. She's all over the place making cucumber sandwiches or bouillabaisse or whatever it was she was cooking up. And Mary's just sitting there, quote, doing nothing, unquote. Oh, no. She was getting light. She produced fruit later. Martha got it backwards. Anyway, that's a whole other story. God wants to bring us to a mature man. That's enough for today. This is the inner workings of the body of Christ. There's nothing to join here. Oh, there's a great detail here that we, we're to keep the unity of the Spirit. You don't make it, you keep it. I'm looking for that right now, and I'm not finding it, but that gives me something to talk about tomorrow. I love this topic because, again, it exists and it's so real just because you can't see it just because the spirit of god is invisible and just because our head jesus christ is hasn't been seen in a couple thousand years it doesn't mean that he's not actively organizing us not in a building but as a people who are united by spirit helping one another to grow so that we can take this message and as we are able give it to others freely